Welcome to News in Focus. My name is Faraz Patel. We say Chazakla to you. Thank you, the viewer, for staying with us here on Hilal TV Channel 347 on DSTV. Now, the KwaZulu Natal government earlier today had launched a plan with its municipalities to go ahead and deal with the rising foodborne illnesses that are spreading, not just in that province, but across the country. Of course, this was sparked by a few weeks ago when an incident of deaths occurred in Naledi Soweto with children consuming what were alleged poisoned food from Spaza shops. Now, with regards to the Spaza shops, these uh, businesses operating across the province are set to come under major scrutiny with municipalities urged to intensify regular inspection of these establishments. This order was handed down by KZN Premier Tami Nduli who was addressing a special meeting of mayors and various municipal leaders in Durban. And Tuli's directive comes amid ongoing health and safety concerns, as well as the spread of these illnesses. Joining us now, I'd like to welcome the KwaZulu-Natal Provincial Government Spokesperson, Bongani Gina, who joins us via Zoom from the province. Bongani, thank you so much for joining us here on News in Focus on Hilal TV. Much appreciated. Thank you so very much, Faraz, and greetings to you and your viewers. That's an absolute pleasure. I think, Bongani, when just listening to uh, the, 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 the Premier's speech, a lot of it came down to the actual education and training because it's, it's one thing having a spaza shop, but understanding the role of the spaza shop from a health and safety perspective, that was really uh, first and foremost on the, uh, the Premier's address to these mayors and municipal members, trying to outline what it is exactly that needs to be needed to try and make sure incidents where we have seen municipalities in KwaZulu-Natal actually being affected by these foodborne illnesses. Yes, indeed, Faraz. Uh, well, local government is a very important sphere because it deals directly with the people. Mm. Councillors in the ward level and mayors in the municipalities, both local and district municipalities, are the ones who directly encounter the challenges that may arise from communities. So when it comes to this incidents as well, like the one that we here in KZN had in Mtuba a few weeks ago, uh, where some school children died uh, or were hospitalized. And the recent one, which we had in the Umzumbe municipality under Uku district, where three kids, three children uh, from the Nrovo family, uh, aged two, six, and 11 years of age, died because of the suspected uh, food poisoning, although post-mortem results are still expected to be back to confirm uh, their actual cause of death. But, and the grandmother hospitalized. Mm. But to, uh, to also uh, give evidence that it could it's high, highly be because of the food poisoning, uh, the dog, their family dog also died after it also ate the same food. But the family had been living with as waste pickers for recycling. Uh, so so that's uh, prompted and these other incidents and what, what is happening in other provinces as well, prompted the premier uh, Honorable Tamsang and to, to be proactive mm. in dealing and preparing for this challenge before it strikes any further in the province. So the better way to do it is to bring together and bring closer the people who are in the ground level, which are mayors, uh, district mayors and local mayors, educate them, make them aware of the situation and the emergence and the agency of the situation that the entire country and province is facing uh, so that and arm them equip them on how to deal that's the approach that the premier took mm. Bongani, when speaking to you know the people you know the, the the residents on the ground a lot of them have said that government is uh, reactive to everything that has happened uh, it needs for example, you've mentioned you know, the Uzumbe, uh, Uzumbe in the Ugu district. I mean, none of us really wanted to see three children passing away in order for there to be a reactive, supposed take on what's happening right now. I mean, surely as provincial government, you would understand the, the residents that they feel aggrieved that something like this had to happen in order for provincial government or even national government to come to the sphere and say, OK, now we're going ahead and setting up a plan. Yeah, uh, the truth of the matter is that 
uh, situations are unprecedented. You never know what will happen when. You know, uh, government unfortunately can't be in each and every household to manage or to check what is happening there. Mm -hmm. Hence, even the incident that happened in Loscop, in Escort, where one guy uh, stepped or ran in Bagville, where one guy stepped his family members, including his mm -hmm. mother, to death. I mean, the police could not be have been there because no one expected that to happen. But I agree with you that awareness uh, can be done in time. Mm. Uh, awareness against crime and awareness against any uh, situation that may pose danger in the livelihood of the people. Mm. Hence, uh, the, 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 the premier and the provincial government, because this decision to actually uh, hold this uh, special meeting that took place today at the Deppen ICC, it was a decision that was taken during uh, Wednesday's cabinet meeting. You can imagine the speed and the proactiveness of the provincial government in dealing with the issue. It was even before the president, as you know, that the mm -hmm. president is here to speak uh, about this matter. Mm -hmm. So I think in this case, the province has been proactive. And you remember and recall that uh, Premier Tuli has been the one who's been leading in the forefront before all these things, in conducting unexpected inspections and uh, an, an announced visits to different spaza shops mm. in the CPT, not only spaza shops, but even uh, buildings, uh, huge buildings in the CPT, uh, which are fully packed with uh, undocumented foreign nationals. Uh, but also not only uh, that he's been doing to get rid of the undocumented foreign national, but also to fight crime, mm. to, to confront crime head on. So I believe, uh, we are doing our best as the provincial government to be proactive, especially in the life-threatening situations or factors that we, we, we see prior, including the food poisoning, mm. uh, shops selling uh, the citizens expired food or, or illicit goods. Uh, we've been proactive. I mean, uh, when the Premier conducted uh, his announced visit and, uh, and, and um, operation with SAPS, and the health specialist in the Deppen CPT uh, two, three weeks ago, in fact, three weeks ago before uh, all these things uh, become so much of a, a news that everyone talks about. The Premier conducted uh, an operation in the Deppen CPT in one show uh, where the foreign nationals are selling illicit cigarettes. Mm. When the police were checking with their device the barcode of the cigarette mm. to check whether it is. Uh, in, in this country and in this province legally, they see the barcode uh, pointed or indicated that the item is a jacket. Mm. Imagine. Yeah. So mm. you see, and the, and the shop owner was arrested. Mm. He's still arrested. Mm. Uh, so, and uh, it's for now for the police to investigate further the source of where these illicit goods, cigarettes or whichever the goods come from. I listened to the Premier's speech yesterday, and I think he, and, and, and he, he spoke about it again this morning, about health safety, that a lot of the raids that are going to happen, or the inspections, uh, let me put it in a milder way, the inspections that are going to be happening at these spaza shops, not just in the townships, but also, you know, in the CBD, especially in, uh, you know, towns like uh, Durban and, of course, Peter Maritzburg, health safety comes at the top of the mind, because... It seems as if many of the shops are not following health regulations. On Wednesday, I listened to Dr. Aaron Mutsualeri, the health minister, saying they just don't seem to want, and this is the Spaza shops, want to take that initiative of complying with health regulations. As a province, I would assume that this is going to be another priority in trying to make sure that these Spaza shops across the border are complying with. Yes, especially with the newly gazetted mm. uh, draft uh, of the regulations that regulate uh, local economy in terms of spaza shops, which was uh, recently on the 9th of November, gazetted by the National Cocta Minister, Honorable Velenko Sinifabisa. Uh, the meet, today's meeting, perhaps of it's the Premier, uh, along with the Cocta MEC, were 
inducting and educating uh, technocrats uh, from corporate services uh, in different various municipalities, uh, the speakers and the mayors about the gazetted laws, which equips government or gives right to government to be able to conduct this uh, rates and inspections to ensure the safety of the people uh, that consume the products and the goods that are being sold. But moreover, to ensure and make sure that the people running the spaza shop are allowed to do so, are doing so, having followed prescripts and the bylaws of the municipalities. And it's now the responsibility of each municipality to ensure that they've got bylaws that are governing or rather that are regulating uh, these puzzle shops uh, to ensure that the goods that are being sold and given or sold to the customers, to clients, to the people, to the children are safe for human consumption. Fortunately, the district municipalities, most of them, they've got food inspectors and uh, those who also uh, check compliance of businesses. Uh, also, secondary municipalities uh, like Mshatuze, Msunduze, uh, and Kezaten and the others also have got the same uh, personnel and uh, human resources uh, that allows them to go to industries, to spaza shop, to any business mm. and search compliance. So we believe if municipalities are well equipped, because provincial government alone cannot do it, mm. we have very limited, but if it is extended to municipalities and they play their role, we will conquer this problem mm. and challenge. We believe that our people will be safe. After the break, I continue my conversation with Bongani Gina, the KwaZulu Natal provincial government spokesperson. We're going to be touching, of course, on access to resources, awareness, but most importantly, uh, what the KwaZulu Natal government has termed a proactive approach to preventing tensions. Do stay tuned after this break. Welcome back to News in Focus. I'm selling conversation with Bongani Gina, who is the KwaZulu-Natal Provincial Government Spokesperson. Bongani, uh, thank you again for staying with us. Bongani, I, I, yesterday I had a discussion with an organization called uh, the Township uh, Economy, or Protecting the Township Economy. And one of the uh, you know, biggest gripes, will be either the provincial government or national government, was that there was an assistance not only from them, because they were able to say that the shift was or the blame was not only on provincial government or national government but also on organizations like the national consumer council or even the actual suppliers where they're getting the goods because what had happened was if for example if there are uh, cold drinks there's no fridges to store the cold drinks or if there are goods that needs to be in warm temperatures the actual surroundings of the spaza shops do not cater for room temperature foods to be there which of course leads to potentially either it getting expired quite quickly or the mixing of, uh, of different products. What people have been saying, of course, stuff like rat poisoning, mixing with foods that are being bought. Uh, how much does the, the, the KZN provincial government say, right, let's take that proactive approach in saying there needs to be education, not only in terms of where each food items needs to be stored, but most importantly, accessing resources to allow for certain food items to be where they are without there being contamination. That's a very important point. I believe that uh, we believe that then as I was speaking about uh, educating uh, the municipalities, mm -hmm. because they are the ones that ca are coming up with the bylaws. They are the ones that are responsible for ensuring compliance uh, of businesses, including spaza shops, because spaza shops are also meant to be run as registered uh, businesses that are compliant uh, with um, health standards that are there in place. But the issue is, if the business owners are not aware of the health standards that's expected of them, how then are they going to ensure compliance? So this is where then uh, municipalities come in, that before you issue a business license, make sure that a person who's to be given business license to run their spaza shop officially are educated, taught, or workshopped about food storage 
and uh, how to keep food. And uh, because in some of these businesses, you find that some are selling expired stuff, mm. but some are even selling fake goods. It's made the occasions where people have been found to be selling uh, fake goods, fake food, uh, fake food items. Mm. You know, so you 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 then that is why we encourage the premier was encouraging municipalities. That is your responsibility uh, to conduct these searches, these workshops, these uh, uh, educational workshops to businesses, because municipalities have under them what we call LED development, uh, local economic development. Uh, that department is responsible for equipping and developing small businesses in the locals mm. to make sure that uh, they are compliant with standards uh, that are required that are in place but also so that those businesses are able to also apply for funding where there are opportunities for funding that are there if all their books are in order and if their house is in order and if they are compliant it is then for government to fund them for example the the office of the premier uh, has opened a youth fund application to all youth owned businesses up to the value of 100 million rands. So those are for startup businesses and businesses that are already in existence. So government is making resources available for businesses to grow, to be proper businesses that are properly run so that they service the communities quite well. Bongani, uh, what has been a noticeable trend over the last few weeks when, you know, when any of these events happen is that you see many of the shops having employees who are not documented and you know you juxtapose that to uh, the residents in the area who are of course of South African origin saying well we don't get hired and this is resulting in of course unemployment in that very same area being quite high. We'd like to think that with of course uh, the gazetted laws that are coming in that Spaza shops, even if they are owned by foreign nationals or are documented, that they will be hiring documented uh, workers to work in their shops. But let's just say out of 10 of these incidents, you have one or two who decide, well, we're not really going to stick to the norm. We're going to continue hiring workers who are not documented. What is the approach then from the KwaZulu-Natal government in dealing with shops who don't want to comply with these uh, uh, laws? When uh, we conduct these raids that the Premier conducts, uh, it, uh, we take um, a multi-sectoral approach uh, where an intergovernmental inter relations approach as well, where we invite labour to be part of it, health department, home affairs, immigration, as well as social development. They all form part of the rate when you call that, and each SAPS as well. And each one has their role to play. Leopard is there to ensure compliance. If compliance is not being done, they shut, either shut you down or, or they, they know their processes, how they deal with you. Uh, home affairs check if your person is in the country, uh, in a for a, rather officially in the country in a legal way, or you are undocumented and you're in the country illegally. They know how to do. They, of course, they are. You can arrest that. You get deported. Uh, we have deported some people from this mm. province in Guzmatan, from Deben. We have deported quite a few, quite a number, since we started with the raids. Uh, and then, uh, though sometimes you you find that uh, some are malfunction, some have Ill health issues. That's where the Department of Health comes in. Some get hospitalized, and uh, so. It's a multi-sectoral approach because we are not expecting everything. So we make sure in order to ensure that we do not also break anybody's human rights. Uh, we follow mm -hmm. right processes and we bring in the right departments that each uh, understand their role that they should play in a situation. Bongani, one final question talking about, of course, the protection of human rights. Um, this was spoken about quite a lot uh, earlier this morning at, this, uh, at the ICC, where a lot of the incidents, and we've seen in the last few weeks, tensions between foreign nationals and 
the residents of those areas that are, of course, uh, you know, documented South Africans really spiking. Okay, it hasn't led to any deaths, thankfully. But what it has led to is that if this does continue and the deaths are occurring at the hands of foreign-owned spaza shops, the, the clock would tick towards a potential rise in xenophobic cases, which I think nobody wants to happen. Um, this approach by the KwaZulu-Natal government, how important is it in trying to make sure that xenophobia does not happen? These attacks don't happen, but most importantly, on the other side of the coin, that the foreign nationals are able to work very closely with local government to make sure that they're doing everything that's correct by the book in making sure that their businesses are in order and most importantly, it's legally operated. Thank you for that question. It's very important, very, very important uh, because this is what, uh, this is the approach that the provincial government has taken, especially the premier of Kwasud Natal, Premier Tamindul. He, he believes, we believe that uh, when approaching social challenges and social ills like crime and this current issue that we are facing of food poisoning and then um, making sure that local spaza shops are compliant and that um, people that are hired there are recognized or are there uh, legally, we took an approach of involving all people of goodwill, all relevant stakeholders, including the community itself, mm. through neighborhood watch, private security companies, and as well the premier call for the resuscitating and uh, the supporting that we support uh, community policing forums. You know that CPF mm. re are represented by community members who are very active in fighting for community rights and safety as well. We support them very much. The premier having taken the Department of Community Safety and liaising under the office, to the office of the premier, to his office, wanted to prioritize that and to integrate all these um, different stakeholders and uh, sectors to make sure that they all fight for one goal and one vision. So if the, if the community is part of your strategy and the plan to attack a certain challenge, you won't have a problem. Mm. But if you're leaving them out and you are on your own, then you will have a problem because things will spiral out of hand. Uh, people will take blow to their own hands. Mm. But if you are with them, you are involving them in the challenge and the problem that is there, then you will conquer because you have the support and the assistance of the communities. They understand these challenges better than anybody because they experience these challenges firsthand. So all we can go do is to come closer to them and bring them closer, all the, the stakeholders that I've mentioned, and make sure that we, we, we fight for a peaceful, safe communities. Bongani, thank you so much for joining us here on News in Focus on Ilal TV. Much appreciated. Thank you so much, Faraz, for your time. Thank you to your viewers as well. No, absolute pleasure. That's Bongani Gina. He's the KwaZulu-Natal provincial government spokesperson. Well, of course, the okay, Zeren government has come to the party. We're going to see whether the other provincial governments are also going to step up. But one definitely will see that this story, these incidents are not going away. Hopefully, it doesn't result in any more illnesses. Uh, hopefully. It doesn't result in any more deaths, but it's going to be a real partnership or work, or hard work that's going to be done by the sector of the spaza shops and most importantly that of local government and national also. That's all we have for you here on News in Focus. From myself, Faraz Patel, and the rest of the team in Johannesburg, do have yourself a good weekend, but most importantly a safe one. Stay beautiful, South Africa. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.